This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. I'm your host Duncan McLeish. Welcome to the show. Up on this episode we are doing a preview. This preview is for Glasgow Fright Fest 2024. Now the day that this episode is actually dropping is the day that the first full day of content from the festival is launching. I will be there for two days along with my main man the Baz and uh, the couple of lushies that is Scott and Liam from Scotland versus Evil, and we will be taking in what is now an annual tradition for podcasts under the stairs, which is the uh, the full program of Friday and Saturday content from Fright Fest in Glasgow at the GFT. Now, on these episodes, as I run into them, I kind of like to just give you a little bit of a feel of one what the films are, read from the official press statements, but also what ones I think from that list are the ones that are ones to look out for in advance of watching them. And then we always do a kind of follow-up episode where we do full reviews of the movies and it's a great opportunity to see how close to the mark I was on actually liking the movie from the blurb submitted on the website and how far off the mark I am. It has happened before where I'm like, on paper, this movie will be the film of the festival. And then, you know, we come back a week later and I'm like, utter dog shit. So we'll see where that lands so yeah uh, Fright Fest will be running um, officially it's the Thursday they do their um, kind of separate debut feature um, but the festival proper is Friday and Saturday so it'll be Friday the 8th of March 2024 if you're watching in the future and Saturday the 9th of March 2024 a bevy of movies to discuss on that one so let's start at the top i've got my trusty ipad with me to keep me in play with this one um the first movie is soul eater now the soul eater is one that i will say up front before reading anything is uh this is one to watch for me that i think this is great that this is the first opening movie of the friday and let me give you some information why so it's directed by Julian Mori and Alexandra Bastilio. You'll know those guys. The reason you'll know those guys is that they are the the creative minds behind um, Inside and Levid. Um, so this is its UK premiere. Uh, two detectives with entirely different work methods are sent to a sleepy French mountain town of Roc Noir. One is investigating a series of gruesome murders and the other one is searching for some missing local children. Soon they realises that soon they realise, not realises, uh, their cases are connected. But an old folklore legend of a malevolent creature that's a terrifying incarnation of the Soul Eater. Um, from co-directors Julian Mori and Alexandra Bastillo, who are part of the vanguard of French extreme cinema that brought you Inside, Le Vide, Among the Living and The Deep House, which was that movie from a couple of years ago, that found footage, what kind of found footagey movie. Um, now they unleash their most devilish and sinister creation yet to shock, horrify and surprise. Um, yeah, I mean, the guys behind Inside, you have me in already. It seems like it's a, a kind of... A kind of you know two grizzled veteran detectives it's got a very noirish sort of plot set up um and i'm in you know that's all you need from me those guys well it's never really maybe capturing the the full potential and promise of inside which i still think to this day is maybe one of the greatest home invasion movies ever made um they, they keep swinging for it and you are guaranteed something vicious if their name is attached to it too. They, they really are a, a, a kind of wonderful duo when it comes to um, delivering the 
the frights and the gore. So that's the opening movie. That's Soul Eater. That'll be at 1 p.m. on the Friday. It is followed up by The Deep Dark, which is directed by Matthew Turi. Um, I do not know that name, so we'll get some details here. It's also worth saying, I haven't actually seen any trailers for this. I'm trying to go in it as blind as possible this year. Um, but this is another French movie, and this is its UK premiere. It says, from director Matteo Turi, who directed Meander and Hostile, it comes an award-winning creature feature taking you on a deep, dark voyage to the edge of limitless, horrific imagination. You have me in, ladies and gents. This is 1856, and in a historic coal mine in northern France, a group of miners find themselves trapped in the subterranean depths after a cave-in. But they soon realise they're not alone. Decades later, veteran miner Roland is forced by management to accompany Professor Berthier underground to take samples and measurements. A sudden landslide prevents them from surfacing, and they too must face... The ancient mutant that, con I was going to say consistently, it's constantly, craves blood. Um, so, French, again, that's usually a winner for me. I do love me some French horror movies. Two back-to-back -back as well. Bold choice Fright Fest to go French in it French. Um, creature feature, love that. Also, the previous movie also sounded like it was a bit of a creature feature. Is that a theme for this festival? We will find out. But on top of that, I think the idea of it's kind of period piece setting, like the claustrophobia of the caves, I think in movies like Descent, this could be interesting. It, it has potential. I'm, I am not saying that I think it's going to be as good as The Soul Eater, but I'm saying on paper, there's a lot to like here for this guy. The next one, on the other hand, who the fuck knows? Um, yeah... Do not adjust your headset, ladies and gents, because at 6pm on the Friday, we will be taking in Mike Hermosa's brand new film, The Invisible Raptor. Uh, this is its UK premiere. This is a American film. Surprise, surprise. Uh, the Tyler Corporation has finally figured out how to engineer a prehistoric... Oh my god. Prehistoric raptor genetically, but they didn't stop there. They also made it invisible. Unfortunately for them, he's a really smart invisible raptor. After easily breaking out of his enclosure... It's now up to, oh god, washed up amusement park paleontologist Dr. Grant Walker and hapless lone security guard Denny Danielson to stop the predator before it wreaks havoc on the entire community of Spielborough County with the help of local celebrity chicken farmer Henrietta McCluskey and Grant's old flame Amber. They're going to uncover the truth behind the mysterious apex predator. Yeah, this sounds awful. Uh, it has Sean Martin in it. And um, horror comedy, obviously. It, I mean, Invisible Raptor, are we doing that because we didn't have budget for actual Raptor? We'll find out. I am not... I like a horror comedy, and it's probably best placed after two hard-hitting French creature features to go something silly, but... I'm not holding out hope. So I'm going to say, if I end up thinking it's entertaining, that is a win. Uh, I think I will probably find that it's maybe not quite my tempo. Um, at 8.45 on the Friday, we will be taking in Wake Up. This one is a Canadian horror movie. Uh, it's directed by, and this is where I get really excited, uh, Francois Simard, Anouk Wassel, and Jon Carl Wassel. That is, by the way, RKSS, for those that don't know, the creative team behind Turbo Kid. Um, from RKA... <laughs> here we go. From RKSS, the directorial collective behind Turbo Kid, Summer of 84 and We Are Zombies, comes a fresh take on the slasher genre, where classic adrenaline fueled horror and Gen Z environmental issues collide in one twisted night from hell. A group of young activists set out to make a political statement by vandalising home superstore as it closes but their plan goes terribly wrong, always does, um, when they become trapped inside and must face a deranged security guard with a gruesome passion for primitive hunting. As the night fills with violence and terror, a desperate fight for their lives begins. So yeah, this is RKSS, I'm in, love Turbo Kid, uh, love Summer 84, I don't know if I've seen We Are Zombies yet, so I need to get the finger out on that one. Um, but yeah, like they're they're great. I interviewed them. I think it was in advance of Summer of '84 coming out, 
And yeah, I dug that movie a lot. Turbo Kid is, you know, I'm about two seconds away from getting a Turbo Kid tattoo. Honestly, any given day, I might just get this is my gnome stick. But um, yeah, super curious. Uh, they're awesome. And they might be in attendance. If they are, I will give them a hooting and a hollering. Um, which brings us to the final movie of Friday, which is Kill Your Lover. That is not a command, it's the name of the title. Um, this one also uh, a duo directing, quite a lot of duos directing. Uh, Alex Austin and Keir Seawert. Uh, this is its UK premiere. This is a British horror movie, kind of loving that. Um, Dakota has had enough of her toxic relationship with Axel, but the feeling isn't mutual. As she tries to end things, a Axel becomes something different something monstrous. He gradually succumbs to the poison of a decaying relationship, becoming a creature with increased aggression. A touch that melts skin and, worst of all, he's contagious. Both an uncompromising breakup film and a wild body horror shocker, Fright Fest alumni and co-directors Alex Austin and Keir Seward's debut feature roars with punk edge, award-winning practical effects and soars with dyna uh, dynamic dynamite performances. Cannot read, ladies and gents, from newcomers Paige Gilmore and Shane Quilly Murphy. So yeah, British horror movie sounds interesting. Sounds like uh, lots of practical effects. It's closing out. Closing out movie on the Friday is usually hit or miss. Um, I'm going to say potential. This has potential. So looking at that list on Friday, I'm going to say the one I'm most looking forward to is Soul Eater. It's probably followed by Wake Up, then The Deep Dark, then Kill Your Lover, and Invisible Raptor is the one I'm least looking forward to from that lineup of five. And yeah, so that's the that's the kickoff. Um, let's talk about the second and final day. This one has six features for a consideration. It starts at the ungodly hour of fucking 10.30 in the morning with the movie Mom. Uh, this is a US-Canada co-production directed by Adam O'Brien. This is apparently its world premiere, and here's the deets on this one. Meredith is a struggling mother, mother abandoned by her family and partner after the appalling death of her newborn son. Alone in her house after separating, she becomes more and more isolated, unaware that the death of her baby has caused the birth of something far more sinister. An entity covered... Covered... An entity conceived from tragedy that is determined to make her relive over and over again the darkest moments of her existence and keep her family forever torn apart. A striking, pro provocative and consuming psychological horror anchored by an incredible performance by Schitt's Creek star Emily Hampshire. Um, heart, like, heart hitting for... Like, the Fright Face guys don't fuck around. They're like that. Oh, what's that? You just had a long night. Maybe you went out and had a few drinks after. Now you're up super early. Here, psychological trauma. That's your first movie. Um, Sounds interesting. Uh, I like a good grim movie like the next guy. So, um, I'm going to say that that one has me interested. I'm not going all chips in, but certainly interested. We're then going to turn to another foreign movie. So, at 1pm... On the Saturday, we are getting a Turkish horror movie. Now, Turkey is not known for lots of horror movies, but Baskin is always going to be held close to my heart. Um, this one is directed by Okram Brechrao. Um, this is its Scottish premiere, so it has played somewhere else in the UK already. Uh, Kemal, a lonely hearse driver, has been entrusted to secretly transport the body of a murdered young woman. Z Zainyip, I think is how you pronounce that, to her parents' home at their final request, but he hears strange groans from the back of the vehicle during the journey. Even though Zainyip hasn't got a pulse, her body comes back to life the moment he sets eyes on her. Kamal falls in love with the undead woman, so he must consistently feed her flesh by committing his own murders, even if it means dealing with the police force attempts to capture a supernatural killer. This sounds fucking rad. Um love this and from what it says here not a comedy so it's going to be a good good old-fashioned dark gruesome movie um turkish uh i'd like yeah at the moment that's that's a duncan reckons that's going to be a fucking home run um moving on another british film not many british films on the list this year which is surprising last year we had loads um well actually we had a load of irish movies so 
not British. Always got to keep that in mind. Um, so this is the world premiere of Custom. Um, this is a UK movie directed by Tiago Texaria. Um, the long-awaited first feature from award-winning award Brazilian-born and UK-based filmmaker Tiago Texaria, director of the acclaimed shorts Dogskin and Wrong Number. In this paranoid horror thriller blurring the lines between death and sex, reality and fantasy, Jasper and Harriet are art house pornographers struggling to make ends meet. Their stock and trade is producing custom made erotic films for an exclusive clientele into the forbidden, the shocking and the strange. As they hit rock bottom, that's when they encounter the audience. A mysterious client offering life-changing money to perform strange rituals on videotape. Now this is landing at the... There's always things you can work out here with the way Fright Fest plays certain movies. This is landing at the 3.35pm slot. Which is just before your break for... Your longer break for, for kind of dinner and and drinks and stuff. Um, it is only an hour and a half long. And I don't know if that stands in good stead or not. Um, in principle, I kind of like the idea, but I don't know. I don't know. That one's an iffy one for me. I, I sometimes find the whole concept of the mysterious audience is usually revealed to be something satanic or some fucking Illuminati cult or whatever, and that sort of thing for me has been done to death. So, tentatively looking forward to that one. You usually find that the third to last and second to last movies are Fright Fest bangers. Like statistically, they're usually the best spots to get on the Saturday. So we'll see what we make of this one as we go for an Italian fucking yes. And this one has Giovanni Lombardo Radis in it, which if you're me, that makes your penis hard. Um, I should have read up on this before I started doing this. So this is its UK premiere. It's directed by Federico Zampelizioni. Um So apparently he is a director as the Italian Rob Zombie. Um, director of Shadow and Tulpa, Demon of Desire. Returns to the extreme horror genre with a dark supernatural chiller starring Laura Laverna. Fresh from her eye-catching lead role in the box office phenomenon Terrifier 2 box office phenomenon. Yay. Uh, she plays Lisa Gray, a budding art restorer who travels to a small Italian village of Sambucci just outside Rome to bring a medieval painting back to its former glory for a wealthy and titled client. He is Vigo! Vigo da Carpet! Sorry. Little does she know she is placing her life in danger from an evil curse and a monster born of myth and brutal pain. It had me. It had me. And then it mentioned Rob Zombie. Um, and that's where I'm like, fine. Uh, I will wait and see. That's the well. Maybe not as excited as I, I was before. This, however, I did read on this one. This one has me in. This one totally has me in. Um, the penultimate movie, 825, is All You Need Is Death. Uh, this one is directed by Paul Dwayne. And it's playing 825 on the Saturday, once again, only an hour and a half long, Irish horror movie. Um, it's its UK premiere. I did read the blurb on this one because I loved the poster artwork because uh, it looked very folk, kind of folk horror -y, and I love folk horror. Um, wait to hear this one. A young couple r records and collects folk songs in rural Ireland, selling them to a mysterious rich buyer. When rumours of a never heard before track reach the couple, they find themselves in an uneasy alliance with a music professor to discover an ancient song. A taboo ba ballad that may up end up unlocking some dark truths from a forgotten past that will alter their isolated lives. Echoing the early work of, wait for it, Ben Wheatley stroke me off and Peter Strickland stroke me off again, Paul Dwayne's ethomusinic... <laughs> Ethnomusicology Shocker is one of the year's most unique, wild, eerie and unsettlingly cautionary folk horror tales. In, 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 in. This one, this one, along with the, the opening movie, The Soul Eater, I'm going to see it because of the placement as well. 825, that's usually where the bangers come out. This could be my film of the festival. So, high, high potential on that one. Which then brings us to the final movie. 
uh, which is called The Last Straw. Um, this is from the USA. It's only an hour and 21 minutes long. Cha-ching! And is directed by Alan Scott Neal, whose name rings a bell. Since UK premiere, Alan Scott Neal makes a vibrant directorial debut with a welcome addition to the canon on socially on-trend chiller thrillers. A roadside rural diner becomes the host of a maniacal killing spree, leaving young waitress Nancy to clean up the bloody mess. After firing the staff at her dad's diner, she un- she covers the last shift of the night by herself, but little does she know she's far from alone. The day is returning to haunt her when things begin to spiral out of control and she must fight for her life over one long night. The final movie tends to never be great, um, but this looks like a relatively low concept romp. And it's also an hour and 20 minutes long. You take credits off, that's an hour and 10 and that is a call I'll take. So yeah, the last straw is the final movie. So over the second day, that's Mum, The Funeral Custom, The Well, uh, All You Need Is Death and The Last Straw. I'm saying The Funeral looks great and All You Need Is Death looks incredible. Um, Custom has potential, The Well possibly potential. Mm, Not much hope for Mum and The Last Straw not not so much hope overall so from the 11 films making up i'm gonna say that i reckon my top three movies will be the soul eater wake up and all you need is death and we will find out how close to the mark i am uh when we drop our review episode and what will be just over a week when we do that keep your eyes peeled on our facebook channel um and our youtube's and our Instas, and our Twitters, and all the other things that we do for postings and updates directly live from the the event itself. We tend to do our Facebook Live, so if you go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash teapots cast, I'll follow the links in the video here, um, or on the podcast. You should be able to jump across. We usually post a little live video or something from there uh, on the YouTube and as part of our um, podcast, we will be releasing um, a vlog which doesn't play well in podcast form. So you're just going to have to put up with the voice without the context. But if you are on our YouTube page um, or you use the Spotify or the Anchor apps to check out the episodes we drop, you will get the video content there. And I'm putting together a vlog which will cover the Friday and Saturday at the event. It'll be kind of shenanigans, mostly out of context conversations, nonsense, stuff that is interesting to do, but a bitch to edit. And the best way to ensure that you don't miss any of that content is if you're checking us out on YouTube and you're checking out this video, you ping us a like, a subscribe, and you hit that little alert button so you are always notified when a brand new video drops. Please leave comments there. Have you seen any of the movies we've mentioned already? Because a lot of these are UK premieres, which means there's a very good chance they've played somewhere else in the world. So if you've seen them before, please, by all means, let us know. Is there anything from the descriptions there that has piqued your interest? Are you an RKSS fan like myself, a lover of Turbo Kid and interested to see what their new movie might feel like? We'll find out when we get to the event if you're checking us out on spotify or anchor there's always a question that pops up at the end of the episodes firstly make sure you subscribe to those channels but please answer the question there as well and lastly if you're checking us out on any of the podcatchers that are available for you make sure you are subscribed we have over 1300 episodes of the podcast under the stairs out there for your listening pleasure so please 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 go and check those out and then make sure you're subscribed so you never miss anything as well all that's left for me to say is i've my fingers are crossed i'm looking forward this one of my favorite things to do each year fright fest is almost as upon us it is the witching hour this episode will drop the morning that we go out there and take that shit in uh, and i'm very much looking forward to it so until then wherever you are whatever the time zone is and whatever you're up to in this big bad world of ours please take care of yourselves out there this is duncan mcleish broadcasting live from under the stairs and i am signing off